today uh, we are going to see history of social work in the americas what is the objective of this particular topic have you all gone through your uh, modules in that it is clearly mentioned that uh, you will get a clear picture about historical milestones in the development of social work and social welfare so when we discuss about social work we all have gone through so many uh, definitions of social work where what famous definition is social work is where we uh, make a person catch fish isn't it not to give them fish but we always help them to catch fish so that is the common uh, you know usage of social work so that means we all equip other people to find out a solution themselves and social welfare what do you mean by social welfare can you can you all give me few examples for welfare activities welfare policies and programs that are uh, planned or processed for the development of a community that can be uh, phcs that can be uh, child education that can be women empowerment that can be policies for education so all those things come under welfare activity so why we always say that there is scope for social work in developed countries than in under developed countries because now most of the developed countries they always think about welfare and there they need the role of a social scientist so we all play the role of social scientist in this kind of type of countries so ultimately social work results in what social welfare so that is happening in most of the developed countries so we will get an idea about that then the second objective is um, we will understand the key features of social environment in each setting in these kind of countries then we always get uh, formal and informal responses to social issues how these type of countries has uh, solved this kind of problems formal and informal problems then development and professionalization of social work in each setting professionalization in each setting so what do we mean by professionalization why we all say that social work is a profession we have our own values our own professional ethics so based on that we are playing an important role in the development of a society so this ethics is very very important so we say that we will understand professionalization of social work when we study this kind of history clear clear yes ma'am yes then uh, yes, yeah i would like to explain the last objective that is to understand the differences and similarities in maturation of the profession that means in various countries because of various process social work has matured in the same way in india now when we study about america the situation was entirely different they went through lot of process before emerging into a profession so we will understand what are the various differences and similarities while emerging as it into a social work profession okay now let me move on to uh, the point historical milestones what do you mean by historical milestones step by step in america how social work emerged okay i know it is a dry subject but at least you listen to me so that when you uh, you know recollect things you will get all these points in your mind okay is that okay yes okay now when we think about historical milestones in bce 2500 i have to go little bit fast so i will be just uh, reading out uh, 
the books of the dead in that it is mentioned egyptian uh, it has clearly mentioned about a king's duties including care for the sick hungry and homeless so understood so now just imagine during those days it was not immersed as a profession but it was mentioned what are the responsibilities of a king so from that this was mentioned now when we go to 1750 bce 750 1750 we can also see king hammurabi in babylonia he developed a code of justice now listen a code of justice what all points should be included in that and bc 1200 we can see jewish people were told that their faith requires them to help the poor in their faith jewish people in their faith it was clearly mentioned that they should help the poor elderly like that then in 530 bc 530 we can see buddha in that also you know love charity enlightenment these were very important bc 500 acts of love for humanity that was mentioned then bc 300 china confucius declares that humans are bound to each other a relation there should be interaction between people then bc 300 prince ashoka of india he mentioned about hospitals shelters for both needy even for animals he mentioned that there should be uh, you know centers then in bc 100 roman tradition wherein the wealth wealthy provided free or low cost grain to all citizens now listen in india also we had that barter system where we used to provide Uh, those things that we had to other people same way you know those kind of tendencies these are all different methods then uh, then when we come back to uh, christian era 30 christian teachings then christian era 400 in india hospitals provided poor or disabled then 542 hospitals similar to those in india are established throughout china okay uh, just uh, keep some words in your brain because uh, when i tell about china india ashoka all those people played an important role then uh, muslims uh, in 650 when you come back to all these are in your notes also but just listen muslims are told that paying zakat zakat means to care for the poor zakat we all know uh, muslims uh they they give sakkar to people poor people then roman church declared that rich people have a moral and legal obligation to support the poor and in magna carta 1215 in england we all know in england magna carta is considered to be the law of justice and in that it clearly mentions about human rights but only for the mobility that means privileged class in magna carta they mentioned about privileged class but later on you know we saw so many developments in that area then uh, and uh, in 1348 another drastic change we can see that is because of a plague and it is known as a, 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 a during that time a, you know lot of people died because of that plague one third of the population and during that time how to serve vulnerable that became a thought in european countries especially because of that plague now we know uh, 2018 we all see so how floods flood hit uh, kerala but during that time also how we were able to manage what was the role of a social work so uh, this all uh, paved the way for social work to develop as a profession then in 1531 england's first legislation providing relief to the poor was issued you see a development that is a legislation providing relief to the poor is issued then in 1601 elizabethan poor law this is one very important landmark in the history of social work profession 1601 elizabethan poor law is established 
can you all uh, re-say that here? Are you listening? 16 not 1. Ah, 16 not 1. Elizabeth and poor law. Very, very important. Very, very important. 16 not 1. Elizabeth and poor law. And in that, it was mentioned about able bodied poor. In Elizabeth and poor law, it is clearly mentioned about able bodied poor. That means they tax people to support basic needs of dependent people in their communities and harshly punish the able body poor. That means um, a sort of tax levy happened in that particular area and this Elizabeth and Porla mentioned that this tax is creating a lot of burden to this kind of poor. So uh, that means when you see people, some people are depending on so many points, but government or other people who are rich, they are not aware about that. So in Elizabeth and Poor, no, they clearly mentioned about able-bodied poor. When you see those people, we feel that they are okay. But they need care and attention. So this was a landmark in the history of social work profession. Okay. Now we will move on to one other module, that is development of social work and social welfare in North America. So we were discussing about historical milestones in the development of social work and social welfare all through the globe. And now we are going to see specifically what happened in South America. Okay. South America, history of South America. Yes. Now, when we go back to 1624, we can see Virginia Colony. We are discussing purely on North America. So this kind of names will come Virginia Colony, where needs of disabled soldiers and sailors, very, very important. So caring soldiers and sailors. In 1642, you can see a colony based on Elizabeth and Poor Law, first such legislation of a new world, Plymouth Colony. That colony, because of Elizabeth and Poor Law, a new world, a new system got generated in Plymouth, Plymouth Colony. In 16, 1650, we can see Protestant work ethic, a kind of a justice or a law or a policy came into existence where it emphasized on self-discipline, hard work, then um, we are not supposed to look down on the people who are unemployed or dependent on others. So these points played a very important role. And in 1776, you can see U.S. Declaration of Independence is signed, promoting freedom for everyone but the slaves. Freedom, promoting freedom for everyone and for the slaves. Then 1787, you can see US, U.S. Constitution adopted promoting gender welfare. Very, very important. 1787, U.S. Constitution promoted promotion of general welfare. Then in 1813, you can see child labor laws are passed. Child labor laws. In North America, you can see, you know, now itself you see a growth in this particular uh, field, laws for eradicating child labor. Then in 1830, you can see National Negro Convention, 1830. Uh, National Negro Convention, as we all know, uh, to eradicate the discrimination of people based on civil rights, health and welfare of people based on color, then women, gender uh, discrimination, all those things, you know, they raised voice in this National Negro Convention in the year 1830. 1843, you can see the New York Association for Improving the Condition of Poor is established. New York Association for Improving the Condition of Poor. Now see, a lot of uh, such kind of organizations started coming. Then in 1848, you can see feminist need 
feminist meet women rights they started playing an important role in 1848 they raised voice that we need rights 1870 you can see you know just uh, think about the years it is coming in that order we discussed uh, started discussion with virginia colony in 1624 now we are in 1870 1870 social darwinism that is very important social darwinism means poverty was a natural part of health condition or a human condition that made poor people made them lazy so social darwinism says that poor people you know they became more and more lazy social darwinism because we always say poor poor or poverty poverty so social darwinism mentioned that we need to plan out programs to make them come out from that social darwinism from that poor situation okay that happened in 1870s that kind of discussions 1874 very 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 important first charity organization society was established very important 1874 first cos jodi what is cos first charity organization of ah charity organization society that was established in the year 1874 and it was not only providing advice but it always provided financial aid to the needy financial aid to the needy clear yes sir okay okay so okay. so a support also support also yes now in 1886 very very important we discussed 1874 charity organized society now 1886 is very very important settlement house us settlement house got established and uh, its ultimate aim was to eliminate difference between you know those people who faced socio economic disparity so to support those kind of people socio economic disparity to support them they started us settlement houses in the year 1886 very very important then 1895 1895 chicago school of social economics chicago school of social economics often recognized as the founder of modern social work so please underline this part 1805 Uh, sorry 1895 chicago school of social economics founding center for modern social work and began offering lectures to poor working with the clear you are clear with that working for the poor okay chicago school of social economics it is considered to be a modern thought in social work okay offering lectures to people working with poor that means a kind of training a training so this is happening in modern social work also we give awareness program we provide training we orient people so that they can do things in a professional way. okay okay very good so that is actually the modern social work okay because it is a kind of modern school of social work now 1900 very very important term social worker term social worker was coined by simon fashion simon fashion and he said uh individual services was very very important and uh, do you all remember who mentioned about individual services case work and all those things do you know which person it is mary richmond who is it mary richmond and you all must have heard about social case work and uh, mary richmond uh, case work that her thought so based on her thought 
social workers 1900 the term social worker that term was coined by simon hatter do you all uh, can you all please repeat that for me who is that person simon simon hatter p a t t e n Simon. in the year 1900 in the year 1900 okay now uh, have you all heard about four p's of social work for p uh, not for for p it is patronage pt and poorlos and philanthropy four p's can you add in social concern for the Do you remember the social case work for P P P person? No, no, I don't. Person, place, place, person, person. with a problem. A uh, person with a problem, place. Ah, uh, ah, uh. person. Ah, uh, yes. Person with a problem comes to a place and goes through a process. So there are four P's. What is it? Person. Problem, problem place, place and process. process that is for patient social uh, social case work okay but here when we mention about four piece we are mentioning about patronage pt poor laws and philanthropy what are the four points patronage can you all repeat with me patronage Ah, P I E T Y P T. Then ah, poor laws and philanthropy. What are the four points? Patronage, P T, poor laws, and philanthropy. Okay, let me discuss these three, these four points. Maybe in the afternoon session, I will be asking some of these questions. So please uh, write or jot down some points. Patronage means. Boosting one segment of society, patronage. Boosting one segment of society. That segment can be a minority group. Minority group means coastal area, women, uh, then uh, SPSP, then uh, tribal people. So boosting them. That is considered to be patronage. So that they somebody. Somebody, uh, I think, ah, yes. Yes. Uh, so, to boost this kind of people by introducing economic program, self-sufficient program, that is what do you mean by patronage? And P T P I E T Y. Some somebody is with the corner. No, I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, but this is not audible. Audible, sir. This is not audible. Your mic. Can all the others please mute your mic, please? So, whenever you have an interruption, please, um, uh, you know, please mention that to me. Otherwise, I will be just uh, going on taking the class. Okay. Okay. Now listen. Uh, So we were discussing about patronage. Now we are moving to P T P I E T Y. It is a religious aspect. What do what is it? It is a religious aspect where serving the needy, and it is always considered as an expression of moral moral charity. We always say, you know, as religious, uh, we offer so many things to poor people. So this is what do you mean by P T? Okay, then third point is poor laws. Now we already saw Elizabethan poor law, settlement houses, all those things. Some poor laws were established as part of, you know, making these people come to the forefront of the society, especially middle class people. Uh, they should come to the forefront of the society. Okay, then as we all know, philanthropy means. so many moral standards got established various programs various policies projects so these are four p's what are the four p's patronage pt then uh, third one is poor laws and philanthropy 
philosophical uh, point so so these are considered to be the four p's when we think about development of social work profession in america now we will also see in 1950 abraham flexner he said that social work lacked written body of knowledge and even now when we uh, see uh, when we take so many books related to social work most of the books uh, came from european authors uh, i don't think there are a lot of books from indian authors so we always have an influence of this kind of development in social work profession and in 1915 according to abraham flexner he said that we need uh, written body of language uh, of uh, information regarding social so that is also a landmark in the history of social work profession in 1970 mary richmond now uh, before that also i mentioned this particular term with regard to social with regard to social case work with regard to social case work and she published social diagnosis very very important social diagnosis her book's name is social diagnosis and this book uh, she got influence from the works of sigmund freud and she developed this particular book and uh, in that she mentioned about individual approach of clients problems especially case work. okay it's 1970 social diagnosis book written by mary richmond it gave an insight to social case work how to work with clients very very important and 1933 us president franklin roosevelt he proclaimed new deal for americans that is also a development in the history of america and uh, he established so many social welfare programs under the label new deal what is that label new deal it's like a new world okay in 1950 you can see social security act of 1935 when we discuss about social security act can anybody please mention any one act that comes to your mind with regard to social security in india any surgeon uh, you must have heard about labor laws then social security act of india workman's compensation act child F- what is it against child labor ah child labor okay but uh, especially related um, employment employees insurance act esi act oh, yes yes esi act these kind of laws are these kind of laws are considered to be social security act so even after while you are doing your job you if you are partially um, disabled if you are becoming partially disabled because of a particular accident happening in an industry you know they will provide you some remuneration or fund or you know some kind of uh, security then if you are working in a uh, central government uh, sector you are provided with lot of provisions so all these things comes under social security act in india and in the same way just imagine in 1915 550 social security act of 1935 established in america where they included children and relatives of whom need children they permanently or totally disabled people and how to support their relatives and their children so for that in 1950 a social security act came into okay in 1955 rosa parks she also came out with a modern child right uh, modern civil rights movement modern civil rights movement means rights for civilian in that particular country then you can see 1960 national 
Association of Schools of Social Work adopted first code of ethics. Now see, now you all see that small progress in developing social work as a profession. NASW, NASW means Association for Professional Social Workers. It developed first code of ethics in the year 1960. That itself shows social work developed as a profession. Social work developed as a profession. Okay, 1960. In 1964, you can see uh, US President Lyndon, he came out with great society. We already saw one other uh, president came out with one program. What was that program? What was that program? Social Shiva. Welfare program. Yes, Karuna, what was it? Program. New, deal. New, New deal. deal. New Deal. New Deal. Now, this president, Linden, has come out with a program. What is it? What is it? Great Society. Great Society. Great Society. Where he really emphasized to uh, solve racial discrimination. That was the main emphasis of this particular program, Great Society. In 1965, we can also see, based on this Great Society programs, they started including needs of older Americans. Now see, geriatric care has become very important even now. Now it is very, very significant. And most of our um, people go and work uh, around the world, especially in this particular sector. So in the year 1965 itself, they planned programs for older Americans as part of Great Society. Then children's education gave emphasis. Then in 1990, you can see the Americans with Disabilities Act. Disabilities. Americans with Disabilities. That act came into existence. In 1990, you can see AIDS Resources Emergency Act. Very, very important. What is the full form of AIDS? Anybody? Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Ah, acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. And this particular, as we all are very well aware, especially during those times, AIDS was a very big problem that society has to deal. And in 1990, in North America, a particular act, Resources Emergency Act, especially to work on AIDS prevention, intervention, treatment, and community planning. Very, very important these terms. Prevention intervention because we need intervention also we cannot solve this problem but we can prevent we can intervene then we can treat we can provide treatment then community planning because we need to modify those particular group or people who are associated with people who are having AIDS. so this is very very important in 1990 in 1990 you can see this particular uh, Act, Resources Emergency Act. And in 1996, you can see President Clinton signed a Reconciliation Act, that is Personal Responsibility and Work Opportunity. What is it? Personal. What is it? Personal Responsibility and Work opportunity. Work Opportunities Reconciliation Act, restricting or eliminating many entitlement programs for poor people and, res, um, you know, compensating that programs with permanent programs. What is it? What is the significance here? Various programs were planned for poor people, but they all were like temporary. But replacing them with more permanent programs that was the aim of personal responsibility and work opportunity by President 
Clinton in the year 1996. So, are you getting the points? Yes, ma'am. Are you having a realization that throughout these years, slowly, uh, it was not in a systematic way when it started, but slowly it started showing that progression. And we saw various policies, programs, various names, various associations, all those things started coming up, which gave the label social work a profession. Okay? Okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma no. Yeah, yeah. Ma'am, no. uh, all points, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. What is all it? Po all points are uh, important, ma'am. We have to, I mean, uh, we have to uh, remember all those points year and all. Yeah, uh, actually, what you can do is uh, now, except I mentioned about um, uh, what is it, uh, social worker name, then great society then New Deal. Understood? So, try to write those years. And you all are very well aware that it is coming up. Years from earlier years to uh, the new years. It is coming up. So, please select various important programs that has happened. And if not able to recollect all the points, at least uh, keep it in your mind around four or five points that uh, paved the way for a systematic social work profession. And the history means uh, you have to study those years. At least you keep in your mind those important programs. Okay? Okay. Uh, we are helpless. We need to know the history. Hmm? Okay. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Now we are moving to see Canada or uh, social work programs that has happened in uh, this particular nation or uh, how these kind of things has helped in the growth of social work as a profession. Okay. 1840. 1840, Britain abolished slavery in all its colonies in the Western Hemisphere. That is a landmark. 1840. Slavery was abolished. 1864, you can see, first scientific study. Now we all say that uh, research is very, very important nowadays. But in the year 1864 itself, a French sociologist, Lee Play, French sociologist Lee Play, he mentioned that <coughs> a scientific study of Poverty is very, very important. So that is also a very important point, 1864. Then when we go back to, uh, when we think about 1990, 1990, 17 schools of social work in Canada and US, 17 schools of social work in Canada and schools of US, formed Council on Social Work Education in 1952. Very, very important. Council on Social Work Education. In 1952. So you can see, in 1919 itself, they started having collaboration. By 1952, a council to discuss on social work education, social work programs, all these things came up. Okay. Okay. Now we will see 1926. CASW, Canadian Association of Social Workers. Canadian Association of Social Workers. Now just imagine we also have in India, do you know? Which are the various uh, organizations uh, to support social work profession? We have Kerala Association of Professional Social Workers, International Federation of Social Workers. So all these associations are playing an important role in coordinating various programs under social work. Okay? In the same way, in 1926, which association started? 
जो दी कैनेडियन कैनेडियन एसोसिएशन ऑफ सोशल वर्कर्स ओके नाउ 1935 नाउ वी आर डिस्कसिंग मेनली अबाउट कनाडा ओके 1935 यू कैन सी कैनेडियन वेलफेयर प्रोग्राम्स बिगिंस कैनेडियन वेलफेयर प्रोग्राम्स एंड इन दैट यू कैन सी अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इंश्योरेंस एक्ट लाइक वी डिस्कस इन इंडिया आल्सो वी हैव लो वी हैव लॉट ऑफ सोशल सिक्योरिटी एक्ट इन द सेम वे in 1935 unemployment insurance that means for unemployed people and insurance okay so those kind of programs started coming up then 1944 national housing act is established and do you know which is the housing program going on in kerala nowadays or in india nowadays we have lot of housing programs uh livelihood mission is there urban livelihood mission is there then rural health mission is there then life mission is there so all these are programs uh, for the welfare of people who are not having houses in the same way a national housing act was established in 1944 okay in 1944 in 1945 allowances family allowances now we can see we, we have various kinds of pensions pensions for widows pensions for old age pension for disabled pension for uh, women prevention for some uh, marginalized people so this kind of program started developing in canada in 1945 in 1952 and all day security system oas this is very very important because this is very very important because as you all know uh, all day security system is very prominent especially in european countries and uh, there the rules everything is different rather than what is happening in india okay so all day security system was introduced in the year 1952 then 1965 66 uh, we can see canadian pension plan canadian assistance plan medicare why we need to study this kind of points can anybody say why we need to study these kind of points they were the stepping stones for today's uh, social security programs they were yeah, the huh. foundation yes and also when we uh, work or when we plan to work or when we are part of any development projects we need to have some idea how to develop a particular project what all programs should be incorporated but that is why we are getting these kind of insights from the history okay here itself you can see canadian pension plan all day security then assistance plan medicare that even now in now we can see this kind of programs are going on successfully in uh, india and also around the world okay and in, in 1985 you can see a canadian health act and uh, this health act gave a comprehensive uh, point to healthcare a comprehensive view on healthcare so what do you mean by that a comprehensive healthcare program started planning programs policies which all areas need to be taken care when there is a pandemic when there is an epidemic how the healthcare system has to move forward what kind of immunization programs how we can introduce that in society what type of awareness should be provided all these things come under this comprehensive plan it happened in the year 1985 canadian health act so these are the important points coming under uh, social work scenario of canada <coughs> or historical development of social work profession in canada <coughs> 
okay so i think you are all in pace with me you are all uh, moving uh, forward with me itself are you all okay yes ma'am yes <coughs> are you all okay yes ma'am yes ma'am yes yes saira i can hear yes ma'am okay no okay. <coughs> okay now we are moving to so which all countries we discuss now america canada canada america canada especially america means we discussed north about america. north america and we also discussed about canada now we are moving to see south america which is the place south america south america south america okay now i am mentioning only the important points okay yes okay ma'am yes uh so when we go through south america the first point we need to think is 1925 first american school of social work. first american south american school of social work and it was uh, formed in the year 1925 1925 first south american school of social work 1930 we can see an argentine social museum 1930 what what was that uh, important uh, thing happened argentine 1930 Argentine Argentine Social Museum, Social Museum, and just imagine these are all giving us lot of ideas, isn't it? Now itself we heard about uh, Nita Ambani's Cultural Museum. In the same way, during those years, nineteen thirty, I am not comparing comparing both these things. Both plays a different role, but in the year nineteen thirty itself. what we say argentine social museum and do you know what was happening in that particular museum school of social service a system where what all social services is uh, being being provided to the society that insight you will be getting from this particular museum and this particular concept paved way for first social work curriculum so which school provided or which museum provided an emphasis or uh, contribution towards uh, social work curriculum argentine social museum argentine school social museum in the year 1930 1930 okay and uh, when you come uh, to 1945 you can see first american congress of social service uh, so when we discuss about social service what is the difference between social service and uh, social work have you all <coughs> at any time have you all thought about it so social uh, services every common people do ma'am and yeah. uh, and social uh, work is uh, were professionals uh, apply i mean uh, work for poor uh, poor uh, society as a person and help others uh, yes. and they, uh, they they require skills and has to be qualified yes. yeah so social service can be done uh, that is why whenever we hear some people will be saying oh social work i am also doing social work but uh, we have to disagree with that point social work is a professional work we use scientific and systematic way to find out social problem to solve the social problem to plan out programs for the social problem. so we use scientific ways and methods when we discuss about social service where anybody who is that is why we always say history of social work started with charity but charity is not social understood later on it developed its own professional way 
to uh, give some charity. Anyway, and now you all are clear with the difference between social service and social work. Now, in 1945, we can see an American Congress of Social Service was held in Chile, where curriculum standards were framed. Like uh, in 1930, you have seen first professional social work curriculum. By 1945, even an American Congress, an American Congress of Social Service was held in Chile. Okay. In 1976, we can see, I'm audible, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. In 1976, a military rule ensure, uh, in Argentina leading to abduction, torture, and killing of more than 12,000 citizens, 1976, okay? A military rule in Argentina paid way for this kind of uh, incidences, like abduction, uh, torture, killing of so many people. So during that time, 1976, social work played a significant role in settling those issues, rehabilitating those people, planning out programs for 1976. 1978, you can see a social work council was set up where education, social work education framework was again modified. We saw a lot of developments happened in the field of education, especially social work. Okay. So these are the important points that has happened uh, with regard to Canada. And I would like to explain uh, one or two points uh, rather than these points. That is, in uh, uh, 1992, Maria Lorena Molina, so don't worry about this kind of names, Maria Lorena of Latin American Association School of Social Work, she proposed that we all should speak up against economic, political and social justice not only within the country but also outside okay so with that punch i am winding up uh, that canadian uh, growth of social work where maria lorena in 1992 gave an emphasis that we should not work only within the country but we should work outside also not only in economic uh, aspects, but also in political and social injustice. Okay? So with that, I am stopping that particular portion. Okay? And we have exams coming up in December, so we have to complete our practicals before, uh, the field work before our exams, if I'm not wrong. Uh, they have not allotted us the um, guides until now. Okay. Uh, regarding that, because I am new to this particular uh, this thing, so I will be clearing all these kind of doubts with um, our men, uh, our concerned person here. Okay, so uh, your doubts, this kind of doubts that you have asked me, I will just ask her, and I will be clearing that uh, by tomorrow. Okay. okay. Thank you. Ma yes. I already emailed, but they haven't responded yet. So. Okay. So uh, in that in that regard. I am not the person to answer you that, but I will just ask uh, for a clarification from our sender. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ma'am, in last class, uh, someone has asked this kind of doubt to our class. So, yeah. uh, from regional center, they have told us clearly this we supposed to not ask this type of doubts to in this platform. And we have yeah. to directly contact to the coaching regional center. Yeah, that's what. Actually, I am not. Uh, I will not be able to respond or answer this kind of questions. But definitely, this kind of doubts I can just uh, clarify if I get an answer only. Okay, because uh, this kind of doubts should be clarified only uh, through the regional center itself, because menders and all those things will be allotted from that place. Okay. Man, actually, what is the problem if from regional center also? They are not picking the call, and we are not able to clear our all doubt. So we're asking, most of the students are asking our doubts in this platform only, but clearly they mentioned that we supposed to not ask these questions here. Mm, okay. Okay. <laughs> so I am also new to this uh, podium. I will just uh, clear this kind of points, but I think um, 
you know you have to call and contact a regional office itself for answers but if some clarifications i can provide i will be providing uh, based on my discussion with our uh, person concerned person here that i will provide that's all okay Ma'am, but actually uh, the call is, they are not picking the call. That's the main problem. Okay, okay. I will uh, just ask her about that. I ask her in the sense here in our uh, organization who is uh, dealing with that. I will be just telling her about this. Okay. Yeah, that's very nice, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, uh, shall we move to the? Point, next point, so that uh, we will not be losing that much time. We have only one more hour. Is that okay? Okay, okay ma'am. Ma we can start. Yes. Um, social welfare before the Elizabethan poor laws and the early Christian tradition. Okay, now, uh, now we are going to discuss about when you heard that particular context, you should think about Uh, the point that we are going to discuss now is history of social work in europe okay history of social work in europe europe so we discussed we saw so many points with regard to north america with regard to south america with regard to canada and now we are going to see few points with regard to with regard to With regard to no, no. Europe, Europe. Okay. Now listen. What are the various objectives of uh, knowing the history of Europe? First point is development of welfare, as we also development of welfare and other social service activities in Europe. Then. to understand the social environment of that particular country we always say we are moving to europe or uh, we will be working in europe but we should know the social environment the um, the uh, what are the factors that is happening in that particular country then formal and informal way of expression of social work in that particular country then professionalization social work became a profession in that particular country in which way then uh, develop and developing form of form of social work profession develop and developing form of social work profession in europe this is very very important uh, as so, social workers uh, my most of our social work uh, students migrate to this kind of countries we should be very well aware about this kind of points now listen when we think about uh, social welfare before the elizabethan poor law and that so when we think about europe we have to clearly discriminate elizabethan poor law and christian early christian tradition both these things are linked or one has contributed towards other and the other has contributed to the the previous one so in that way when we discuss about christian church there are different points that has to be considered there are six specific roles uh, in uh, social work relation especially with regard to christian tradition understood because when we think about europe christian tradition plays a very important role that is why we have to think, think about this six roles okay first one is deacon deacons in uh, europe or when we hear the word deacon we should understand men who daily collected food clothing and money brought about regular offerings to religious service these kind of people were known as deacons listen men who daily collected food clothing and money in order to have religious offering for religious services and these kind of offerings were distributed to the elderly or those too sick to attend church now listen 
we are discussing about a christian tradition but even then in the a social service scenario we can see clear those who were not able to attend church or those who were elderly the uh, deacons collected this kind of things and it was provided to this kind of people and deacons uh, had the role of caring the orphans helping the travelers strangers then distributed money to the poor are you clear so deacon is the first role deacon and uh, as we already mentioned christian tradition plays a very important role in this particular um, social work professional development in europe and first role that uh, was mentioned under the label deacon clear okay now we will move on to the second point that is deaconess deaconess okay so definitely when we hear that word itself it comes to our mind this is mainly concerned with ladies okay which ladies helping the deacons elderly widows who help the deacons and they mainly dealt with needs of women and children they mainly dealt with needs of women and children are you clear are you clear yes, deacon yes, what is it fatima yes, Clear, ma'am. Another one. Ah, that is it. For you know, we are discussing about social work uh, professional development in Europe. Okay, and as we all know, Europe is a country where Christian tradition plays a very important role. So, uh, when we go back to history, we can see it started as Christian tradition, where different uh, roles played by people. in christianity six roles okay in that the first role is deacon as i already mentioned deacon means they collected food clothing then money regular offerings for religious services all those things and yes. uh, they played an important role among the orphans and all those things okay yes ma'am so that was a role played by deacon so when we yes. think about deaconess second role is deacons deaconess they are mainly women okay women okay. but they help deacons okay and they especially they are mainly elderly widows these deaconess are mainly elderly okay. widows and they help the deacons for what mainly they work them on women and children okay okay i got it now we will go on to the ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് for a particular post we will plan on programs for the welfare of those people isn't it in the yeah. same way when you go back to history we can see six roles okay and people okay. who took up that role they played this kind of activities okay and which resulted in the welfare of people okay uh -huh. and in okay. that they can play this particular role deacon has played this particular role now we are going to discuss about the third point that is sub deacons okay ma'am one doubt ma'am six what are the six roles ma'am yeah i am discussing the third one i will be coming to the next 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 like that we will discuss the six ones okay okay, okay. now we are in the third point that is sub deacons what is it sub deacons okay sub deacons means younger men who, who are the who played this particular role younger men okay and they also assisted the deacon with their and you know they also played an important role in helping the poor then this kind of things okay so the main duty for them was to assist the deacons clear 
in all the social service activities that was coordinated by deacons the sub deacons or this n deacons played a very important role by assisting by assisting clear clear okay ma'am yes clear ma'am yes clear ma'am now we are yeah now we are moving to the next role that is exorcist e x o r c i s t s exorcist e x o r c i s t s okay now now listen uh, for example during those days spirit or evil spirit or this kind of uh, things played an important role especially people were very fearful of that or when some people had some mental problems or you know uh, immature uh, behavior people uh, used to label them as mentally ill person or people uh, with uh, evil spirits isn't it you all are very well aware about that during those days people you know face this kind of problem some people who uh, were having some individual problem or fear or all those kind of things um, the society will label them as people with you know evil spirits or uh, they will do some activities you know in an evil way to solve this kind of problem there comes the role of exorcist are you clear where people these kind of persons having the charge that they will be playing a very important role in solving the problems of this unfortunate victims are you clear now now we all know we have mental health asylums we have psychiatrists we have counseling centers all those things are there but during those days whenever a person had some kind of mental issues they were labeled as people with evil spirit and superstitious things used to happen in the society but this exorcist exorcist now maybe we can call them as a counselor or maybe we can call them as a mental health professional okay this exorcist they played a very important role in solving the problem of this kind of unfortunate victims during those times are you clear with what do you mean by exorcist yes ma'am yes ma'am somebody yes okay so we discussed deacons deacons then deacons sub deacons deacons sub deacons exorcist exorcist now we are going to see forces f o s s o r s f o s s o r s they are also known as grave diggers they are also known as grave diggers what do you mean by that uh, they uh, pre uh, dug i mean pre prepared the graves ah and mainly they maintain cemeteries isn't it okay so during those days a particular group of people had they that particular role where they prepared graves okay and decorated them with paintings and inscriptions inscriptions means some uh, written forms inscribe they inscribe it in those cemeteries okay some uh, cards or something regarding that particular person or no those things inscriptions and generally maintain cemeteries so what was the role of these forces yes what is this uh, catacombs catacombs dug dug uh, catacombs it's, it is mentioned yeah uh, actually that is you know they dig those places okay and they are not considered to be the digging like they form they make graves they dig tamil varai la kuri you know you we all know that they dig the graves okay ma'am yeah they maintain that they dig the graves 
then after that they decorate then after that they uh, paint then they after that they inscribe and then they maintain so i think you are clear yes ma'am okay the uh, preparation means uh, grave diggers that is preparing grave means a particular family or a particular group of people or a particular person have a particular grave so they prepare a particular place then they dig that grave clear okay then they decorate the with paintings during those days you know that was a particular you know that was done by a particular group of people so they are not normally when you think about the present people you should not think in that way they are considered to be having a particular role very important role in the society clear paintings and inscriptions and they maintained that particular grave they were playing a very important role are you clear yes ma'am okay now we will move on to the next one that is parambalani that means additional helpers uh, p a r a b a l a n i okay they are known as additional helpers for the visibly sick okay and that means rather than often or poor what do you mean by that often people ma'am uh, now often listen people. in that it is also mentioned they later on they were known as hospital attendants or uh, in the later later centuries they were uh, later named as hospital attendants attendants okay that means not orphan or poor that uh, people we all know as many programs were there for to serve them but this parabalani means these were helpers for sick people means those who are not able to move from one place to another or attend we need or those kind of people need a particular person to attend to them to move to take care understood so those kind of people were known as one minute please okay so now we discussed uh, six roles which were the six roles deacons 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 and parambalani parambalani so are you clear yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so why we need to study these points have you thought about it actually yes. now listen when you are in a particular post you know if you have a particular category of people what is the role each person has to play all those things has to be has to be you know clear and here itself when you see each person or each group of people had their own role that is also very important when we discuss about professional sources okay okay and now you got a clear cut idea during those days how social work as a profession emerged okay now okay uh, yeah we all need to see some other points also coming under this that is um uh during i told you in europe church played an important role or christian tradition played an important role and some other uh, role played by church where burial of those who died whether christian or not it can be christian that is why uh, this forces had a very important role in the society during those days okay then second one care for the widowed and elderly now we have seen deaconess and deacons they are playing that particular role then appointment of trustees to look after widows care for orphans <coughs> sorry rescue and adoption of abandoned infants 
abandoned infants those uh, the kids uh, you know those who are abandoned they their care has to be taken care rescue and adoption then kidnapped people care for the kidnapped people then support for people in prison <coughs> especially in those days due to religious beliefs then for pilgrims travelers and refugees then support for the unemployed support for physically sick i'm just moving fast because you are clear about this kind of points uh, then uh, maintenance of anyone who appeared poor appeared poor in the sense who are considered to be poor then establishment of christian banks to support the needy so banks to support the needy then famine and natural calamity famine means poverty then natural calamity as we all know the cyclones uh, tsunamis then earthquake anything so to support all these things so these were the important responsibilities divided among all these groups i think you are clear now okay yes okay yes. Mm. yes who is feeling sleepy now who is yawning okay so we finished europe you got a little bit idea about uh, the history of europe okay mm -hmm. is that okay okay ma'am so many points are coming to your brain i can understand the situation but you know just listen and uh, just get some insights from this different classes okay okay now we are going to see which country or which uh, area united kingdom what is it united kingdom yes united kingdom in that when we think about united kingdom when we conceptualize a society with regard to united kingdom uh, if you have your notes with you you can just go through that in that a clear uh, table is being provided where pre industrial pre industrial means years back then when we think about that particular concept in modern that is there and post modern post modern okay pre industrial modern and post modern are you getting the point we are dividing pre industrial means years back then when we come to uh, modern means during the industrialization and when we come to the post modern the present terminology that we use for that for example now listen feudalism in those days earlier days we used to call societies where basically feudal autocratic uh, autonomous all those kind of points we can mention feudal feudal culture or uh, landlord or uh, a king those kind of culture then modern concept of feudalism is capitalism where we say uh, have have nots burgundy proletariat have and have nots has and have then post modern now when we say the same concept we say global capitalism almost same that means for the welfare of people okay and pre industrial when we term when we use the term agrarian means agriculture agriculture oriented that later in the modern scenario it is industrial means industry started coming up then post modern we say this information information it it hub it oriented it development you are getting the point okay so agrarian later came to known as industrial industrial now we say it as it now earlier we said rural areas rural traditional villages but later we started saying it as urban urban now when we say this is known as decentralized decentralization of farming from 
top to bottom from top to grassroot level so that is what is happening in the present scenario okay actually this concept was uh, mentioned by uh, mahatma gandhi also uh, in his uh, development uh, thinking the same thing is happening now in most of the world that is decentralization power going to the grassroots levels then earlier days we used to say simple societies simple agrarian societies but we say uh, in the industrial world we say it as complex complex and now we say it as fragmented It's lot of divisions lot of people floating population people coming going it is fragmented okay simple complex fragmented clear clear yes ma'am okay now uh, when we say why i am discussing this particular point is because when you write some essays and all this will be very helpful to you because if you understand that change okay now religion during earlier days we used to say religious but later or in the industrial society we say it as secular secular but now we say it as pluralist a lot of beliefs anybody can have a belief in his own way his own uh, thinking based on all these points okay so faith uh, sorry religious secular pluralist are you clear clear change yeah. in the religious sector yes, then when we discuss about faith faith in earlier days i when we discuss about belief also we thought about um, spirit uh, then superstition all those things but now we say science science whenever we discuss upon we mention about science also is it it then now when we say it is not a skeptical or reality skeptical that means that can happen these are the possible ways these are the assumptions this can also happen so in that way we discuss relativity relativity understood so now we have a particular answer not only a particular answer we have so many answers for a particular question okay so faith has changed way to science science have been changed to skepticism or related related this can happen that also can happen in this way we can solve the problem in these ways you can solve the problem so in that way okay now when we think about superstition superstition uh, we have to think about now or in the industrial society we started thinking about the reasons earlier days we never thought about the reason it was a belief because of this particular person's behavior this particular person or that family is having this problem evil spirit has attacked but uh, later we started saying that there is a reason there is a reason behind that now we say that diverse beliefs or ambivalence or we have so many sources to solve that particular problem so many sources to solve that particular problem. so superstition as per way to reasons we started thinking about various reasons then later now we started thinking about diverse beliefs diverse opportunities diverse way of solving this particular problem now tradition tradition we say uh, earlier we always used to say we had this tradition we had this particular way of doing things but now we say universal truth or during the industrial period itself we started saying universal truth so we all have to understand this as a universal truth and now when we think about that we say contingencies or contradictions all these things can happen contingencies can have this some minor points major points contradictions uh, we say that is the universal truth but it can be contradictory 
we can have some other statements also uh, or based on this particular study this is the result are you clear so this is how the discussions or words have changed now if you go to postmodern it is always said as decentralized fragmented pluralist diverse beliefs skepticism contingencies or contradictions we never say that it is because of tradition or agrarian society or feudalism or religion nothing like that so are you all getting my point okay are you all okay yes ma'am yes okay ma'am yes now and let me just finish that particular point so that i can wind up uh the morning session uh and uh, i will be taking the afternoon session by 2 o'clock you got the message isn't it yes ma'am it is 2 o'clock isn't it yes okay ma'am okay, yes now listen i will just wind it up uh 12:15 that means 1250 king john of england so we are discussing about united kingdom and we discussed about uh, the different changes that has happened in the you know thinking pattern that we have seen now we are going to discuss about some important things happened in united kingdom in the year 1215 king john of england signed the magna carta and we all are very well aware magna carta is the you know as we say it is a written laws about human rights and in 1215 that came uh, based on human rights just imagine now we have human rights commission women rights commission child rights commission all those commissions but during that time itself in the magna carta magna carta king john of england mentioned about human rights and this is considered to be the forerunner of all the modern laws very 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 important even now we whenever we say we say magna carta isn't it because this is the forerunner of all the modern okay now in 1348 we can see uh, you know feudalism that culture started breaking down in 1348 especially because of that plague bubonic plague bubonic plague means a dangerous or it created fear among the people which killed about one third of the population and where uh, you know economic policies and military uh, threats all those uh, started playing an important role then this plague came so people started um, going away from feudalistic culture or a particular uh, uh, family is running the country or a particular family is uh, playing an important role in taking this those kind of culture started degrading in this particular especially when plague started uh, in 1348 so it showed a sign that people started thinking in a different way okay and in 1531 uh, we can see uh, licensing of older and disabled people uh, to take their own neighborhood and to give harsh punishment to unlicensed people so to implement or to fight against this to fight against this kind of uh, discrimination or uh, you know harassment of this kind of, against this kind of people especially against beggars or older people uh, poor relief poor relief that was established in 1531 in england okay 1531 okay so these are the important points 1215 uh, king john of england signed magna carta 1348 uh, people started showing signs that they are moving away from feudalistic culture and 1531 we can see england's first salute or we can see a poor relief uh, to solve the problems of uh, aged people who are beggars all those were established in 1531 now i would like to uh, discuss about important poor able bodied poor all those things were mentioned in 
Elizabeth and poor law. Do you remember which year? Elizabeth and poor law. Which year? 1843. 1801. 1801. 1801. 1801. 1801. 1801. 1801. 1801. 1801. 1801. 1801. 1801. Able body. Okay. Important poor and able body. Poor. So now we will discuss about who is important poor according to Elizabethan poor law. Now listen. Important poor means aged, chronic sick, blind, mentally disabled, needed residential care. So these kind of people has to be taken care of in voluntary arts schools or centers. So those people who needed a take care, those were considered to be important poor accord, according to Elizabethan Wala. Very, very important. Okay. Now, able body poor. From the word itself, it is clear, isn't it? From the word itself, it is clear. They are able, but they are poor. Okay. Where to set up, set to work in a workhouse. They felt to be able to work, but were lazy. That means they were not given opportunities to work. Or they were lazy, lazy, lazy. They were going on lazy. They were able, but they were not even provided with opportunities. Now, as we say, underdeveloped, underemployment. You know, opportunities are not there. Or that made them more and more lazy. Okay, so able bodied poor, they were made to work in some kind of centers. So these two points are mentioned in Elizabethan Poor Law of 1601. And in the United Kingdom, programs started planning based on these two important um, differences or able bodied poor and um, important poor. Okay, now, able-bodied poor who ran away or persistent idlers. What do you mean by the persistent idlers? Who are not coming for work or even though given an opportunity, they are not uh, willing to come for work. Are you clear? Okay, so uh, those persistent idlers, uh, they were punished. I mean, so for them, a house of correction. House of correction. To make them more into uh, the development sector, uh, a particular term, house of correction, also came into existence. Are you clear now? So that is very, very important when we think about uh, United Kingdom and also when we think about the United Kingdom's development of social work profession, uh, Elizabeth and Poor has. Elizabeth and Poor Law has played an important role, and uh, in that they plan programs based on important poor, uh, able bodied poor, and also correctional settings develop uh, based on, you know, house of correction. Are you all clear with these points? Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes. Now we will move to the last point in that that is social work and modern society. And in that, we will discuss two, three points. Uh, that is, Poor Law Amendment Act of 1834. Poor Law Amendment Act of... Act of... Poor Law Amendment Act of... 1843. 1834. 1834. What is the significance of or how it contributed towards modern society. Now, deserving poor or as we discussed important poor, we can say deserving poor or undeserving. Modern concept, we discussed in the previous or in the Elizabethan poor, we discussed about important poor or able-bodied poor. But in uh, the modern scenario, we discuss about deserving poor and also and also, 
able bodied poor and uh, sorry important poor and able bodied poor in the same way in the modern scenario we discuss about deserving poor and undeserving poor and the deserving ah, the deserving poor and the undeserving poor okay deserving poor means elderly we know that deserving poor why we say them as deserving poor because they are not productive at a particular age or they cannot be included uh, like you know a productive group into the society they are considered in that way elderly sick or disabled people continuously sick and then disabled even though we need we want them to do something we are not able to make them do that then orphans and widows they are marginalized or they are not able to come to the forefront orphans and widows so this kind of people should be provided with financial support or practical support practical support that means centers should be there so that we can make them more productive that is why uh, you know a development of this particular aspect can be seen in our society nowadays like pagal veed they care home for elderly so that they can come together they can talk they can discuss they can they get all those privileges and they spend time they go back so this kind of concept started developing from this kind of points clear okay then undeserving poor undeserving poor means like able bodied unemployed men i am not getting a job based on my qualification because of that i am not going for a job able body unemployed men then single mothers because our society is like that if a single mother go for a particular thing uh, who will take care of the child or um, society will labor her, her in a way so because of that they are not being used then prostitutes prostitutes they are selling their body for the sake of making money so able bodied but they are not undeserving poor okay they are undeserving poor so i think you got the point why we say undeserving poor clear yes ma'am okay yes now uh, so uh, years back we mentioned about important and able bodied poor but now we mention about deserving and undeserving okay now let me just find up the class uh just find up the class and uh, today we discussed about uh, social work scenarios of which all countries no america canada canada uk south uh, south america US, then canada canada then us uk uk you you know that uk uk and now i i know that i have gone fast but uh, i'm helpless i just wanted to make you sure that uh, i i really want to finish the portion that's why i was going fast okay uh, but i will just conclude uh, by uh, saying a quote from that uh, last point charitable organization society cois has provided a very good uh, road what we aim in all social work is that all community every member in it shall be progressive on a rising scale every day our thoughts should be progressive clear then we shall be satisfied if the community as well can share momentary increase in well learning culture unless all classes within it are part of the social life means we should be satisfied only after we attain this